Can you hear me? You have to unmute. You've gone again, Duncan. We have Duncan, you've muted yourself. Okay, I'll, you could you should be able to hear me now. Yep. So, re welcome to John. Uh, John has been working with the Borders Forest Trust for uh, a number of years um, and he's really been participating a great deal in the evolution of this uh, great vision for restoring the landscape with Cariff Brand and Corehead. Um, and more recently, and particularly more relevant for us, um, Games Up and, and Tala. Uh, and of course, Borges Forest Trust is now extending their advice um, and experience to other groups within the south of Scotland. So there's a lot of experience, um, a lot of activity been going on, a quite a bold vision. Um, and uh, one thing I would, I don't know whether John will be men mentioning it, but, um, and I don't know whether you, are you just hearing me at the moment? You can't see me. There's a, a wonderful book produced by Borders Forest Trust called A Journey in Landscape Restoration, produced this year, fully illustrated, a lot of experts giving very short uh, contributions. So, uh, John, we welcome you coming here uh, and uh, telling us about what Borders Forest Trust has been doing. Thank you. You just muted, John. You'll have to unmute in order to speak now. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, thank you. Oh, right, good. That's fine. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for, for, for inviting me uh, to come along. Um, I should uh, explain uh, that, um, uh, that I am uh, in Borders Forest Trust in the company of many experts, but I'm myself um, uh, a total uh, out and out amateur um, in, in terms of um, land management and, and, and woodland but have been a very keen uh, hill walker and mountaineer uh, uh, and um, uh, have always enjoyed uh, woodlands and, 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 and the outdoors. Enough about me. Um, what I want to talk about is basically a statement about our, our, our vision. That's just taken from the constitution, our objectives, and then our work on the, um, uh, uh, on the Moffat Hills. Um, with particular reference to, to Tower and Games Hope, but uh, um, uh, uh, other uh, sites as well. <coughs> the talk will, I'll come back to it, the, 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 the talk will start with just some facts and figures about BFT um, and the team. Um, uh, and then I'll talk about one or two of the general issues uh, of, of doing what we're doing in, in the hills, public engagement, volunteers and, and, and controlling the browsing. And then specifically about the three sites, particularly Tyler and Games Hope. Um, and then I'll wrap up uh, with um, some uh, a bit of information about partnership working um, and engaging with the wider public and, and educational work. So without any more ado, um, this is the uh, objectives of Borders Forest Trust. I'm not going to, when there are textual slides, I do not intend to read them all out, but I will read this out. Um, to conserve, regenerate and promote the restoration of uh, woodlands in the, the geographical region of the borders. Um, I can't actually do the rest of it because <laughs> there's some, some, some mini screens that have come up in front of it, but um, uh, an important part of Scotland's natural environment for the benefit of the public. <coughs> you get the drift of, it's a fairly general statement, um, uh, about really ecological restoration, particularly uh, of woodland, uh, and you'll see why wood, why woodland is is, is so um, important and, and also so relevant. 
Founded in 1996, um, the Borders Forest Trust uh, originally came from the community woodland movement, um, which was um, uh, a chap called Tim Stead in the central borders who initiated it. And in fact, uh, the people little aware that um, the borders was the place where there was the first community woodland in Britain um, because of um, Tim Stead's uh, initiative. Uh, obviously, we're a charity based in, 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 and we happen to be based in Monteviot, although all our sites uh, um, are in the Moffat Hills. We have eight staff, uh, which comes only to five whole time equivalents and, and a turnover of less than half a million. So we're quite a small organisation and most of uh, that money goes on projects and on the salaries of the staff. And the income comes from woodland grants, um, charitable trusts and donors, very typical uh, uh, mix of funding from a, a, a small charity. Moving on to public engagement with local communities and, 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 and local groups, um, all the trustees um, uh, and the leading volunteers all come from the borders and um, uh, pretty well all of them uh, have done throughout the 20 uh, very nearly 25 years of, of, of BFT's uh, existence. Um, and then looking at uh, our engagement with local communities um, uh, around the three sites. Uh, in Moffat, our engagement has been a bit sporadic um, because uh, of the nature of, 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 our, 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 of really how far um, Corehead is from um, uh, the um, area that, that, that a lot of our volunteers are drawn from, uh, Central Borders, and um, uh, uh, also because, partly actually because Core Head is in itself very difficult to access from Moffat, and it's quite difficult to involve the Moffat community in Core Head. At Teller and Games Hope, well, you've got myself to um, uh, cope with um, as, a, as, a, as somebody who's in touch with you, but I think I'm right in saying that Nick Hunt is in touch from time to time. Uh, as is, 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 is Jane, Jane Rosegrand. At Carifran, the, 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 the contact with the local community has been slower. And I think that's partly because uh, Moffatdale itself um, um, is basically just a series of landowners. There isn't a, a distinctive uh, community, the central community for, for Moffatdale. Moffat itself is obviously the community. And it's taken the, the, the time for people in Moffat to begin to really see um, Carifran as, as, as something um, relatively close. It's not quite on their back door and you now see um, a growing number of people coming and walking their dogs and visiting Carifran which is really great to see um, and now that we have a community engagement officer who lives in Moffat um, I think you'll see uh, that growing. The, 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 the last community um, that uh, is Ettrick and Yarrow um, around our site which we have actually not had very much um, uh, engagement with other than um, myself and other volunteers stopping at the Gordon Arms after a day out on the hill um, uh, chatting to people um, and we do actually have contact with one of the local uh, um, sheep farmers uh, who has done contract work with BFT for, for, for many years but um, uh, it, it's, it, it's partly because most of our land is, is, is over Burke Hill um, and and in Dumfries and Galloway, or right on the uh, and, uh, or right on the edge of Dumfries and Galloway, in the case of um, Tower and Games Hope. Looking at volunteers, um, coordinated Moffat, um, regular volunteers at Carifran at Corehead. Um, at the moment, volunteering at, at uh, the Games Hope has been by arrangement, but I'm quite interested in establishing a regular volunteering group. Um, I was thinking, of, thinking about this when I was, I was doing this presentation. Um, uh, but um, uh, in terms of volunteer planting, we have no difficulty in recruiting people, as you will see when I flick through these, these uh, slides. Here's a group of volunteer planters on um, fairly dismal weather uh, outside the Bothy with our ranger pointing something up in the hill. That, that, that's Andy um, uh, with, the, with the blue cup in, in, in the middle there. Um, this is a mix of local volunteers, people from the borders. Um, and uh, from uh, uh, beyond. Uh, and here's a group of volunteers at Core Head, um, high up on the hill. Um, they're actually a, a, a mix of local volunteers and, and students, a student group from Edinburgh before the lockdown and all that, um, planting uh, montane willows and juniper high up uh, on Tweed Hope. Uh, 
and uh, this is when um, we now are able to recruit very large numbers of volunteers uh, when we're organizing planting weekends. It came about as a result of uh, our ranger, uh, Andy Wilson, who's a bit of a folk uh, uh, music uh, uh, participant. Uh, and um, he was at a folk uh, event and, and mentioned to somebody who was there that, that, that they did planting. And they said, oh, that's fantastic, that's brilliant. What a nice practical way of doing the kinds of things that I go around demonstrating about um, uh, <coughs> climate change and so on. That'll give us a chance. And within a couple of days, there were over a thousand people, uh, over a thousand people, I mean, amazing numbers. Uh, um, offering to, to volunteer, we can't cope with that kind of number. Uh, but we did get um, uh, 60 people uh, on site and we have had 60 people now on two or three occasions volunteering. So um, uh, the, the, the planting is very uh, popular. Um, but we don't work everybody to the bone all the time. And this is an interesting little group of, of uh, uh, a small sample of a, of a group of, of young people who came here courtesy the John Muir Trust, who have a small site near Traquair. And there are so many of them that they rang me up at short notice and said, could you help out by taking some of our um, international volunteers? And it was some, uh, a combination of Scottish, German and Spanish uh, young people. And uh, here they are resting after they've been clearing a fence um, uh, um, along beside the Game Hope, Games Hope. Those of you who know the Games Hope might recognise some of those waterfalls. And um, the last general issue is, is controlling the browsing. And the fence is the, is, is, is the big thing. New fences, we've spent over 200,000 pounds over uh, the three sites between Carifran, which has a, had a completely new fence all the way around it, 12 kilometers, um, back in about 19, uh, about 2000, 2000, 2001, 2002. Um, uh, um, uh, Corehead and uh, at um, Tower and Games Hope, um, but when we when we got Tower and Games Hope, the fence was not in a very good condition in in in, in some areas, some pretty big gaps in it. Um, uh, and uh, uh, at um, uh, Tower Nick, which is between uh, the Upper Tower and uh, the Grey Mare's Tail, this is the Grey Mare's Tail over here on this side of the fence, and uh, this is down to the Tower Valley. Uh, on this side. Uh, it's um, uh, the, the, the fence had just not was not there at all um, and we had almost three kilometers of fencing to put in uh, through a contractor right up to the top of uh, First Hope Rig which is way 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 over here. I think that's a bit of the fence disappearing over there. <coughs> and um, as a result of, 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 of the pressure from deer on the planting in the Games Hope, we have rather reluctantly um, gone ahead and um, got uh, Forestry uh, um, Scotland to um, fund 50% of the cost uh, of a deer fence to contain the uh, seeker deer in, in Mingan Forest from coming over. And browsing. We've got now over a um, hundred thousand trees in the Games Hope here, um, particularly along the Garalet and on this side of the of the valley. Um, and now that these trees are beginning uh, to get away, uh, um, and uh, next spring will will be really quite visible um, uh, to to those with a sharp eye. Um, they'll also be very visible to the deer. Um, and, and the, the seeker could, uh, if they came across uh, in numbers, and there's a lot of them in in, in Mingham, even the, and, and they're being very disturbed by all the all the clear felling. Um, that uh, we are very fearful that they they, they could just wreck uh, all of, all all the uh, the woodland that's been planted, and a lot of that that that, that woodland uh, has been planted by um, a forestry grant um, uh, scheme. I'm trying to get by cursor to show where we where it is but it's not behaving oh here we are that's better a lot of this this, this planting along the the, the the hillside here um, is, is, is through um, a forestry commission grant so it's basically taxpayers funding um, uh, and we just really cannot afford to, to see that that we're lost but we have put in um, uh, seven uh, pedestrian gates of which this is one uh, in the picture here 
uh, <coughs> um, one at each end of the, the deer fence and five along the, the course of it. And I'm actually asking Borders Forest Trust to see if they could um, uh, put in a, a couple more because they are um, troublesome things when you're w walking the hills and I've been very keen on walking the hills along with them, so many other people. Uh, um, they're unlocked uh, um, and they will, they should swing, swing too, certainly whilst they're new. But we'll have um, we'll have our work cut out just looking after these fences and keeping them uh, in reasonable uh, uh, condition. And this is a, another picture of the fence going down uh, to the. It goes right down to the Teller Teller Valley with the Mingan Forest in the background. And uh, looking after the fence is a major task. Um, uh, and this is a picture. You wouldn't believe this, but this was um, April um, 2020. Uh, 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 when I got permission from Police Scotland to come out and do some fence checks, uh, and uh, that's what I was faced with in Talanik, um, way above um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the snow-free uh, valleys, um, Talanik was just full of this huge drift, um, and underneath that drift, uh, the fence would slowly be pulled apart by the snow melting, uh, and it smelts from the bottom and then drags the fence down. So I got out my snow shovel and tried to dig a bit of it out uh, and that bit as a result survived without getting flattened but further down the fence it got completely flattened. We had a, a, a day's work um, in May to, 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 to get it back up again. And when I say we, in the middle of, of the COVID-19 lockdown that wasn't easy but we did get permission for two of us keeping uh, physical distancing which is not difficult uh, up in the hills um, uh, to carry out the repair. Uh, here's a couple of uh, volunteers uh, doing a repair on Nick is now in rather better weather. Right, let's go on and look at the three sites. Um, Carifran, Corehead and Teller and Game Soap. Um, and in, in, in the reverse order, we'll start with um, uh, Teller and Game Soap. Um, and I'll talk a bit about the planting plans, uh, access footpaths, um, Bothy and Barn. Um, uh, in passing really. But first of all, I'd like to do a, a, a quick um, tour for those of you who, I, don't, I uh, appreciate that many of you will be familiar with, uh, with, with the site, but some of you may not be uh, as familiar with um, uh, being right up in the hills. Um, they're not the easiest place to get to. So I'll do a, a, a quick rattle around uh, the, the site. This is an aerial photograph taken by um, uh, friends of Borders Forest Trust who used to do aerial photography taken in 2005 I think it is or 2006 of the Games Hope. That's over six kilometres long. The uh, area, the, 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 the point at the bottom end, the bottom right hand corner of the picture uh, is actually the highest point down here. This is Rotten Bottom um, and this is the boundary with the Carifran Valley and Moffatdale. Uh, and and this is uh, all the way down the Games Hope, that's Games Hope Loch on the left, the largest area of high water, of um, fresh water uh, uh, in the borders. It's higher than Loch Skeen. Um, well, actually quite a considerable amount, um, but it's a bit smaller. Um, uh, and it's a just wonderful zigzagging valley. It has such potential. I liken it to a, a, a south of Scotland equivalent to Glen Feshy, for those of you who know the Highlands. And here's the Tallers Reservoir in the top corner there, just a little um, uh, a peak of it um, uh, at the mouth of the, uh, uh, of the Games Hope. Terrific uh, uh, area. Um, no prospect of um, uh, trees and things or, or woodland on these tops. They're blown to pieces. But in the sheltered uh, sides of some of these uh, hills, um, certainly there is. And uh, at Sturt Craig here, for instance, uh, you actually find wildflowers uh, uh, and um, what they call, what the botanists call tall herbs tucked away uh, uh, um, in what is one of the most the remotest places, I should think one of the remotest places in the borders. Um, and then that's looking down the game so from completely the other end and this is the Bothy here and this is the Taliban. Um, which is part of the site and we now make a, a very good use of. Um, <coughs> and the track comes down. It's not going to help. And the track comes down, making its way uh, down to the 
Tala uh, Reservoir. And that's looking up uh, the upper Tala, um, uh, beyond the Meg uh, above the Megat Stone, looking up to Tala Nick. And you can imagine in the uh, in, in, in the future, there being a nice path going up here through some woodland, some uh, uh, open areas, some spaces, and slowly making its way up over Teller Nick and then dropping down to the Grey Mare's Tail. Um, and not a difficult walk in a reasonable day, um, um, and hopefully a fairly accessible one, although it's quite a pull, pull up to the, to, to the Nick. That's the, the Bothy. Uh, which I imagine a lot of you will be familiar with, having perhaps walked up uh, with family or with the dog. And that's the, the burn, <coughs> which I think is a, a wonderful uh, feature. It, 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 it's um, uh, one, so there's so many lovely cascades and pools in it, a very popular place uh, with, um, uh, uh, the, you can call it wild swimming, basically pool swimming um, uh, in the summertime. Um, I've been surprised how busy it can be uh, on a, a hot, uh, sunny uh, uh, summer's day in the, in the holiday period or at the weekend. And there's wildlife uh, uh, there and an increasing amount of wildlife. This is a short-eared owl that I managed to snap uh, at the end of a day's uh, fencing. Um, I'm sorry it's not such a good picture but it's right into the into the sun, uh, in, into the evening sun. I was quite surprised that my little um, mobile phone camera managed to uh, got, uh, get as good a picture as, as, as that. Uh, and uh, um, uh, I also saw a couple of these birds uh, up at the game set block roosting uh, in, in the moss. Uh, we've, we've, we've even had a, a, a one person uh, spotting a couple of otters up the game set. So it's, it's, it's coming to life uh, very much so. Right, looking at the planting plans, um, this is a, a, an outline of sort of broad habitat uh, types by our resident ecologist, uh, Stuart. And what he's done is he's just sketched out some um, uh, general areas uh, 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 indicating to the, to the, um, to the trust uh, the kind of quality of the, of, of, of the land uh, uh, in different blocks and patches and including some um, places where there's um, some remnant woodland uh, uh, dotted about, uh, which th th there is. Um, and, and then this helps to guide what we plant. Um, what we know is, is, is that uh, this land uh, will uh, uh, take, uh, or trees will, will, will adapt to, uh, to, to growing in, 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 uh, uh, on a wide variety of these sites, but not, as I say, on the tops. And this is a, a planting uh, uh, um, outline sketch uh, uh, with some specifics and some uh, uh, more general uh, 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 indications. So don't be alarmed by, by, by it. The first thing to point out is that the pink uh, is actually for volunteer planting and it's much more scattered and open. Uh, it's not the volunteer planting is done without a grant, without a forestry grant scheme. Um, we fund it uh, through donors. The main cost is actually uh, buying the trees from the nurseries that bring on the seed. We, we, we collect a lot of the seed ourselves, uh, but the propagation um, has to be done by um, uh, a nursery. Uh, and um, there will be volunteer, uh, some volunteer planting along these sites and, and along below the crags um, above the, the um, the reservoir. And then this is the first forestry granting block which I spoke about in relation to the deer fence um, along the side of Garley Hill, um, east facing but quite well sheltered. And then this is the second block which is being planted just now. The Games Hope Bothy is just in here um, uh, <coughs> uh, and the, the, the planting I think actually now extends a little bit uh, beyond where that patch of rather pale blue is. And to, uh, another area that ha has now been planted with a forestry grant scheme is across the side of Carlavon Hill. This is actually proving to be, a, uh, looks like being a, a good place, rather wet, but it is nicely sheltered and it's not bad, uh, not, not bad ground. Um, in the future, we have a, a firm plan to plant a, a small area uh, of um, uh, woodland um, on a very good uh, ground here. 
but very close to the um, Mingan woods, and that's partly the driver for the for the deer fence. Um, and then on Wood Bray, which is exactly the other side of the map over here, um, uh, we're exploring the possibility of some woodland there. The idea is not to blanket the place in woodland. This will be pretty extensive woodland along here, and, and that will be fairly extensive woodland there. Um, but elsewhere, it will be more, much more of what we'd call a mosaic patchwork. And if any of you um, have been uh, uh, looking at the BBC Scotland website, you'll have seen that we won the Tree of the Year award this year, which we're very chuffed about. And uh, as uh, the Scottish director for the Woodland Trust uh, said, um, that um, uh, whilst uh, <coughs> where one tree uh, grows, lots of others can grow. It may be an ordinary tree, but it's an extraordinary um, uh, um, uh, 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 <coughs> occasion um, uh, to have survived uh, uh, so long. And the same applies to this tree um, very near the Bothy at Talrand Game So. If one tree can grow to this extent, this is an old birch tree which has survived. And um, uh, if it can grow, if, you can, if one birch tree can grow to, to that size here, then there's a lot more that can do as well, uh, can, that can in the future. And, and we've, we've been doing quite a lot of volunteer planting along this side of, 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 the, of the valley. And um, here are uh, uh, some uh, interesting trees. These are actually montane, this is montane woodland, where uh, Borders Forest Trust, particularly at Tower and Games Hope, and to some extent at uh, uh, Carafran, uh, have been breaking, uh, not entirely new ground, but um, uh, in amongst the, the, the first to actually seek to restore a habitat that has long since disappeared which is montane woodland and this is this is downy willow heading for nicky's now um uh, and um uh, the top side of colavan hill um uh, and uh, <coughs> uh in the background there is dwarf birch which is a very um uh, welcome um, uh, and, and special introduction that we we're able to do at teller and games hope which should be much more widespread uh, in, the, in the border hills and in the highlands as well, where montane woodland is being planted. And this is an example of uh, the uh, downy birch, sorry, downy willow um, on, um, uh, um, sorry, sorry, it just came in on my, my screen there. Um, downy willow on uh, Tallow Craig, uh, where we have planted several thousand of these and they are doing so well it's wonderful to see how they've really taken off uh, and here's a, a little downy birch it's not a very good picture uh, for you to get a clear image of but um, th these things are really tough this is right on the very nearly the top that is virtually the top of Tanner Craig just tucked in below uh, the the lip uh, and um, they are as happy as Larry having snow dumped on top of them uh, in the winter time. They flatten out um, and then come back to life again uh, in, in, in the summer, uh, well, in the late spring. And it's astonishing how the montane willows uh, can uh, thrive even on what looks like, uh, you know, well, it is just bare scree, but underneath that scree is actually some damp ground and uh, they just uh, take off, they, 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 they love it, as long as they don't get browsed. Right, um, the other, another uh, feature of uh, all the sites, of course, is having to get up there with the, with the trees. And here's Andy on the quad bike coming up um, the track at uh, uh, Tala uh, with a, one of the volunteers. Um, uh, uh, who's been uh, either, either he'll be just be coming up uh, to, to, to plant um, uh, uh, early, not, at, not that early in the morning, but um, early enough. Uh, he probably travelled a, a, a little way to come here. A uh, gentleman from Dumfries and Galloway, I think. <coughs> and a general picture uh, of the uh, where the bothy is and the barn is in the bottom of the game set valley. What I wanted to do with in particular this is to mention about um, access. It's not just about access along the, the track here, which is where you saw Andy on the quad bike, 
but um, I think it's important that we 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 um, uh, encourage people to come and, and explore a bit more of, of Tyler and Games Hope. I meant to say actually at the beginning that we have three sites at Corehead, at Carifran, and at Tyler and Games Hope, and each is slightly different. Um, Carifran uh, was set up right from the start as as, as nature first, very much um, about making it um, a, a, a native woodland uh, with some limited access. At uh, Tyler and Games Hope, we're keen to, and I, I, how I characterise it as, as 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 nature and 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 people, uh, and developing a, a footpath. Um, at the moment, there is what we call a desire line, which is pretty boggy and and, and rough going. Uh, that actually works its way up the valley at least as far as uh, this lin here. It'd be nice to keep the top part of the game's hope uh, as, as as wild as it is at the present. Um, but uh, and then eventually perhaps a look at ways of putting a, a path actually up the hill. Um, that wouldn't be uh, too, too too difficult or too intrusive. Um, and then at Corehead, uh, when I come to Corehead, I'll explain how there we're trying to to, to look at ways of of, of combining woodland and some farming of some in, in some form. And that takes us uh, on to core head. Well, farming and forestry, 60 hairs, uh, six, uh, over 60 hectares of woodland. And we still, and we, we still have a, a flock of 3,300 uh, um, breeding uh, uh, ewes. Um, <coughs> but that's becoming increasingly difficult to sustain. Uh, and uh, we're currently reviewing the future of, of Coed. Every um, upland sheep farmer, I think, is concerned about what the future may hold. And we've noticed that the, the um, income to the trust uh, from uh, the, the farming operation at, at, at Coed has been shrinking steadily year on year. Um, we may move to hill cattle uh, uh, at the end of the review. Um, well, let's just go back for a second, for a moment. Um, we'll touch on a map of uh, of, um, of uh, the, the planting. Um, tell a little bit about the. We put a new stock fence up. Heart fell. I don't. I don't have a photograph of that. It's just going up at the moment. Um, uh, and we've got uh, the plantations that need uh, addressing. Uh, our access is is, is is a bit problematic, but we've got good, um, so very good walking, including the Allen Way at, at Corehead. Anyway, let's have a look quickly at the site. Um, this is an aerial photograph taken at the same time as that one of, of, of the game. So, um, and this is the, the main road. Where are we are? There we are. This is the main road running down uh, from the beef tub, which is in here. Um, uh, and core head, a very unusual site. It, the, 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 the boundaries actually, the, uh, uh, this, isn't, this is not the source of the Allen. The source of the Allen is up Tweed Hope over here, um, uh, uh, according to the geographers. But basically, it's another uh, tributary of the uh, you know, initial tributary of the, Tweed, of the Allen. Um, and the, and the, our boundary goes uh, uh, along there. So this side of the Devil's Beef Top is owned by a neighbouring farm. But the the Corehead site runs along this uh, ridge line right the way along here, um, out along uh, to this um, uh, uh, pass in here, and then goes up a teller uh, to Hartfell side, right to the top of Hartfell, and then it comes down, um, comes uh, uh, round um, uh, here, um, and then back down, picking up these plantations uh, are included in, in, in the site. When we acquired Core Head uh, back in 2010, we wanted to do um, planting in the upper valleys and retain the, 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 the sheep farming down here. You see the sheep felled there. Um, uh, it's a very, very ancient site, by the way. This is Broad Tay, which is an important Neolithic um, community, um, which we have to keep um, uh, clear of, of, of any planting um, uh, um, and really should be trimmed at least once or twice a year. Um, and the plan was to uh, keep the sheep on the skirtle and uh, in the, the beef tub, uh, but we would plant Tweed Hope, which is the Allen, and maintain the path running down uh, at the Allen, uh, and then um, <coughs> up Loch and Burn uh, and up White Hope. 
uh, and uh, that, that's where the planting has, has, has been undertaken and we're now doing some um, uh, montane uh, planting uh, uh, along uh, the, the, the high level up which is where you saw the, um, uh, the, 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 the volunteers. And that's the Tweed Hope planting um, uh, about uh, eight years ago. Um, that's now well up uh, and the walk uh, up to um, uh, the headwaters of the Allen, uh, which is up here, uh, uh, is now a lovely woodland walk uh, coming down uh, through uh, uh, the, the, this woodland, um, tapering off as you go up higher. The, the growth rates are, are slower, the, 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 the woodland is less. Uh, um, uh, prominent. And this is one of the, uh, well, really two of the plantations, it's a single plantation, if you, just a single uh, group if you look at it from the map. Um, uh, on the one hand, uh, spruce, uh, um, mainly Sitka spruce on the left hand side and larch over uh, this side, uh, which we're wanting to um, uh, replace uh, with native woodland in time. This is a, a lovely um, uh, part of uh, the Tweed Hope uh, Kluch, and, um, but it's very, very overshadowed by these now uh, over mature trees which are uh, falling down left, right and centre whenever it's very, very windy. Um, and there's a concern about the larch um, uh, being at risk of getting Phytophthora remorum. So we've got woodlot. We've we've done a, a, a an agree, made an agreement with um, a, a small group of foresters uh, who um, have signed up to a, what's called a woodlot agreement. And over five years, um, they plan to uh, take out uh, the uh, spruce and take out some of the larch um, uh, uh, um, incrementally uh, and replace it with native woodland uh, at no cost. Uh, to us, um, but no income, uh, or I think actually a very small rental income. Uh, they take the value of the, of, of the timber, um, and uh, but nevertheless uh, undertake what is uh, sorting out a very, very uh, uh, much damaged uh, uh, plantation. And actually over to the right over here uh, is um, uh, uh, another plantation. Uh, the problem with the larch, of course, uh, with Phytophthora is we may find that if it gets diseased, um, the forestry Scotland will require us to um, uh, fell it uh, uh, completely. Uh, and uh, one of the things that are particularly prominent at uh, Corehead is uh, badgers. Uh, and we have to be very, and, and, the, and the, the wood lotters, um, because they're doing it incrementally um, uh, and because they're professional foresters, um, are very conscious that they have to um, uh, abide by all the uh, protective regulations around uh, forestry uh, and uh, badgers, uh, where you can only uh, actually do the felling at certain times of the year outside uh, breeding uh, season. And lastly, Carifran. Nature first, and I think really the pictures speak for themselves. Um, yes, visits by access, uh, experts, I'll say a little bit about access. The regeneration it becoming now much more of an important thing. And planting, well, no, the planting isn't finished, uh, particularly what's called the understory. I'll tell you a little bit about that. And we're also um, beating up uh, in um, the forestry jargon, basically um, uh, reinforcing some of the existing um, uh, uh, plant, uh, uh, planting, uh, uh, thickening it up and also diversifying it a little bit. We've got a rather lot of birch uh, and some work on maintaining the path. But first of all, basically the pictures of Carifran, as I say, this is, this is what uh, one could see um, the Games Hope uh, and Tallow being like in uh, 15, 20 years time, but not quite so densely uh, planted. Um, and this is the track uh, running up um, the uh, this is uh, up, the, up the, whoops, just come back in a second. Um, running up Carifran and it goes right the way up to the half over here. But beyond that, it's, it's desire lines. And we've done some scattered planting in below Tallow Craig and round the corner there. Um, and that's a view higher up the valley, um, uh, right up to um, the, the head of the Carifran burn and a, a lovely hanging valley up here where we're doing montane scrub 
and this is off to Rotten Bottom, which is in that um, little Bialik up, up, up there. Uh, and this is uh, Andy's uh, old dog who sadly died earlier this year, Jess, a lovely animal. Uh, he's now uh, got an, a, 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 another uh, collie, it was lovely to see on the hill. And that's what the, the, the planting lower down uh, has resulted in, really lovely uh, uh, young um, but maturing uh, woodland, some terrific growth rates. That particularly is a, a, a astonishing growth rate in um, 20 years on what was originally absolutely bleak and bare, empty uh, um, valley. You have to remember that there were effectively no trees in this valley bar, the little mountain ash that um, we got the Tree of the Year award. And that's now um, a picture from last autumn, which I took. Um, and really, it's partly to illustrate not just the rowan berry, they're just a prompt for the amount of buried fruit that is now um, uh, uh, available each autumn for all the, the, the birds and the insects and the bugs um, in, in the valley. Uh, it is uh, full of. Uh, 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 winter food uh, and as a consequence it's full of, of, of life um, and uh, the planting there it looks solid there but in fact there's lots of gaps uh, in, in this woodland here uh, one or two denser patches along the, the burn uh, and this is looking up one of the hills uh, with the, the, the planting the, the, the birch scattering up the hills and you can see going right by right, right, right high up onto the skyline you're still getting a uh, uh, woodland growing. Um, and this is the, the growth in, 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 in birds um, uh, on the site. Uh, we did, uh, we, the feature of Carifan is it's really led by a bunch of retired and, and also working sci uh, natural scientists living around Peebles. Um, and they did a very thorough and comprehensive study of the birds over 15 years. And in the first five years, you get very little change in the bird life. There's meadow pipits and chaffinches, very small numbers of chaffinches, quite a lot of meadow, meadow pipits. And then after about year eight, the black caps appear, and then uh, a number of other birds, and I'm not a birder, um, so I'm not going to try and tell you who, which of all, all these birds are. But we've now gone from just two resident species in um, uh, Carifran to in the summertime, some of these are passerines, some of these are, 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 are migrants. But we've gone from two species uh, to now uh, 20 species of birds um, nesting in, uh, in, in the valley. And I think we've got just about every warbler uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the book for Scotland, uh, there's seven of them. Um, uh, and you can see the list below um, uh, at um, uh, willow warbler, chaffinch, black cap, lesser red polled, uh, and so on. Uh, and, and, and we're now up to, to, to the latest survey at uh, 20 different species and lots of passing species. Um, as a, uh, a volunteer, I quite often uh, see the peregrine um, buzzards, um, uh, and um, you'll see in a minute um, other birds as well. Here's a photograph of the black cap um, uh, taken by Richard Clarkson um, uh, uh, in, in the valley earlier this spring. And the wildflowers, uh, you wouldn't believe this, but I couldn't believe this, but this wildflower is at 700 metres um, on a, 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 in the uh, hanging valley above the Carifran burn um, uh, and um, uh, uh, hasn't been stuck there by a... a, a, a <coughs> Crafty gardener, um, it's just a sprung to life as a result of taking the grazing off. And this is what has resulted um, in that hanging valley. It is absolutely astonishes me. We now have a wildflower meadow at 700 meters. Uh, this is looking down into Carifran down there. Um, uh, and uh, as long as the weather's reasonably dry, uh, um, uh, late May, early June, it is just bursting with uh, uh, flowers uh, and life. And of course, with the flowers come lots and lots of different insects. It's a lovely, lovely place to be. Uh, I've been putting in uh, montane willow particularly uh, uh, up in this area, but not to the exclusion of the flowers, I do hasten to add. 
And here's some of the montane willow, as I say, thriving on on um, uh, uh, scree. Um, we're not just planting it in in, in uh, Talon game, so we're also planting it in uh, Carifran. And Carifran um, uh, has, uh, by virtue of being promoted by by Philip Ashwell, uh, who's doing the talk in the in the right hand at the right hand side. Uh, Philip has been uh, fantastic at leading uh, the work around Carifran. Um, and this is uh, John Savory, uh, for once without his hat on at the back. Where's my, there we are. Um, uh, um, uh, at the back there, he's the one who's done all the bird surveys. Um, and we're talking to a large group of professionals. These are conservationists from Scottish Natural Heritage um, and a couple of uh, charitable vol uh, volunteer organisations. Um, all know what they're talking about and they've come to Carifran because uh, they uh, are excited by what has been achieved in such a relatively short space of time from a completely um, bleak, bare, empty valley which, is, valley which has been grazed uh, to um, really no more than just um, uh, scattered grassland. And this is a, a group from Leeds University of Students uh, with Steve Carver, uh, um, uh, who comes up each year with uh, his student group uh, to take them to, to take them up. Uh, and uh, they've come from, uh, as you can see, from uh, both China and from Africa. Uh, uh, this chap's going back, I think he said, to Senegal, um, hoping to work in forestry. But uh, very much with the ecology in mind, he assured me. <laughs> And coming to the end now of my talk, just saying a little bit about working with others. Um, uh, <coughs> Southern Upland uh, Partnership, uh, Tower Hartfell, uh, Wildland Area. I want to say a little bit about that in, in a moment. But we also work with uh, not just uh, SUP, but also the Tweed Forum. Um, we've got a, a, a stake in the connecting the Tweed project, as I know that um, uh, uh, Tweed's Mill has. Um, the Woodland Trust funds one of our. Um, uh, eight posts, uh, Nikki Hume. Oops, um, and uh, we are working with, um, and these are some of our partners very quickly Langham, Kielder, the Galloway Forest Park Carbon Centre, Forest Carbon, um, and uh, um, various community woodlands, um, uh, uh, particularly in Dumfries and Galloway. And Borders Forest Trust has always worked with other landowners, encouraging them. Uh, and promoting to promoting wood and actually making some business out of it as well, like a consultancy uh, doing the, the the grant applications, organising uh, the, the the planting, um, and we are, along with the Tweed Forum operate the Borders Tree Planting Grant, which maybe some of you have benefited from, um, and we we don't obviously work in partnership with, but we've certainly liaised very closely with um, Nature Scotland, uh, what used to be Scottish Natural Heritage. Not quite sure whether Nature Scott really is that much better. Um, uh, Scottish Forestry, the old commission, and um, a little bit with Scottish Environmental Protection Agency. This is the map of the wild land area, um, uh, uh, which um, uh, Nature Scott, I should say, uh, has uh, have, has identified. This is the largest uh, of the two double wild land areas in the south of Scotland. And as such, it's, it, it, it's a designation, but it's the designation that doesn't carry any statutory powers. But it's to discourage really totally disproportionate, unsuitable major development um, uh, on these uplands. And what we and Southern Upland Partnership, Nick Tabor, are interested in doing is really trying to get together a collaboration uh, between Wims and March uh, at this end Scottish Water here, and ourselves, and such others of the of the and NTS at the Greymoor's Tail, and such as others of the landowners who are willing to join in, to really look at how this area could be managed as a uh, um, uh, and, and planned uh, as an entity um, to the benefit of not just the the ecology but also very much to visitors. Um, both for yes, rec recreational purposes, health and well-being. Uh, as well as for ecosystem services and, and biodiversity, uh, and that's what, what, what we're, we're working towards. And SUP, on a partnership, have secured some funding uh, um, uh, and, and are in the process of seeking to recruit um, somebody to come and begin 
uh, some consultative work around the um, the wildland area. So we'll see what how that how that how that unfolds. But BFT very much um, a, a partner with SUP for obvious reasons with our big slice of land uh, uh, in the midst of it. And lastly, engagement with the wider public. Final slide, just to let you know that we are now uh, long overdue. Borders Forest Trust has now got an excellent uh, communications and social media administrator who's now actively managing our website and got us onto Facebook um, and Twitter and Instagram. Um, and the, 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 the tree of the year is a good example of that happening. Thank you for being so patient. Um, I'm sorry that's taken so long. Um, I've tried to go as quickly as I could, um, and I'd be delighted to take any questions uh, that you choose to fire at me. Well, thank you very much, John. Um, a really good um, explanation of the three woodlands that you're working with. And I think I only really know the game soap um, woodland, but it's, it's fascinating to see your plans for it. So I'm happy to take questions if anyone has questions from, for John, um, you can just wave at me or um, I'll wave at John and, and unmute yourself to ask a question. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew, actually, I'm going I'm to dip out the way and Andrew's going to put his head in to ask a question. Hello, John. Hello. Yes. I was just uh, wondering, will there ever come a time when the planting and the trees are mature enough that you can remove the, the deer fencing? and not have to worry about it being um, browsed by um, uh, the, the seeker, will it ever be uh, uh, strong enough basically to look after itself? I, 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 I have quite difficulty in, 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 in hearing clearly exactly. I, I, I gathered that question was, it was about the deer fence and, and whether it's going to be permanent, is that right? That's right. Will it, will it ever come a time when the woodland is mature enough that it won't be um, destroyed by the deer? I need to try to get the my my, um, uh, my, my picture back up again. At the moment, I've still got my presentation. Anyway, right in relation to the deer fence. The deer fence is going to need to be there as long as 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 as, as, as the, the the pressure from deer uh, it, it poses a really serious threat. One of the and one of the twists with the deer fence is that the the cost of it was so high that we have um, taken um, a, 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 a very comp a very professional contractor, but the deer fence that he's erected is a single. Um, roll a single a single height of rylock, um, which means it's very difficult to do what we had originally thought we would be able to do, which is to reduce the height of the deer fence um, after maybe five years once the trees um, were up a bit. Um, as a result, I'm not sure how long uh, that deer fence will need to remain in place. Um, it will also depend on the extent to which uh, the government um, puts into practice the recommendations of the Deer Advisory Group insofar as the south of Scotland is concerned um, and in relation to um, deer in the south of Scotland. I am aware that um, in the past uh, Scottish natural heritage as was uh, has expressed concern at the size of the um, uh, of the, the the herd of seeker um, uh, in um, the Megan Forest, but you perhaps may be much more knowledgeable about that, that my, than myself. It is a it, it is very it's a very difficult issue to get the balance right, um, and in a sense, it's an acknowledgement that we're struggling with that uh, that that deer fence is there. Hence the. Um, seven pedestrian gates five along the along the route and and, and me actually asking for uh, a, a couple more um, to try to um, uh, reduce the um, uh, 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 the inconvenience of it it's, the intrusiveness is unavoidable um, but certainly to try to reduce the, the inconvenience of it does that go some way to answering your question 
Yeah, yes, thank you very much. Can I ask a question, John? Yes, go ahead. Duncan, are you going to answer, ask a question or, or shall I? Well, I was just going to ask about, um, uh, you've got a deer fence. Uh, I have seen a very smelly sheep coming over from the from grey mare's tail. Our sheep, sorry, our goats. Are goats a problem? No, um, goats at Tauran Games. We were fortunate uh, in, in our eyes because goats are um, uh, goats in woodland. I mean, goats love woodland. <laughs> <laughs> a bit too much um, uh, uh, and certainly it would it, it, it's very impractical to have goats in amongst young uh, woodland just as it is with deer or for that matter with sheep um, uh, but as it happens uh, the goats in in uh, fluid and the goats in the gray mare's tail have never shown much interest in 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 uh, tower and game so because when we uh, first um, acquired the site as you could see, we had significant gaps in the fence um, at various points. Um, uh, the two I showed you were um, uh, uh, with um, uh, Winter Hope and uh, with the Grey Mare's Tail, but there were similar problems uh, with Fruid, where there are goats. But um, there were no goats on the site and, there was th and the goats never came onto the site. If you observe the behaviour of the goats, as long as there's grazing for them lower down, they don't bother to go up as high as the sheep do. Um, uh, and um, uh, that's where th they have stayed um, uh, in, um, uh, uh, in fruit uh, and actually in, 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 um, uh, um, in the grey mare's tail as well. We do have a, uh, not a problem with them, but we have had to make, make, make sure that the fence up um, uh, this, uh, alongside uh, where, where Carafrana joins um, uh, the grey mare's tail, um, the, 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 there is the, the, the goats um, regularly come up against the fence and sort of have a look at it and decide, well, no, it's just a bit too high and a bit too um, uh, uh, difficult to, to uh, either jump over or get through. Hello John, it's Matthew here. Hello. All right, so I was trying to find out, we, we walked up, um, up uh, Games Hope Burn and um, we get to the to the fence, to the deer fence, and we wanted to go up to the pool at the bottom, at the end. Games so Hope Games Hope Lock. So how, how do we access that? Are we, are we, can we climb over that fence? I mean, it's very, very difficult. Is there, is there any way through? Uh, no, you, 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 we, <laughs> we, we, we would very much discourage you from climbing over it. And anyway, I would advise you to avoid doing it because it's um, uh, 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 not, uh, it, it's not practical, um, uh, and indeed for most people, it's not safe either. Um, as I say, there are there are pedestrian gates. Um, the pedestrian gates are distributed um, uh, at either end. Um, I'm not quite sure where you where you were. Were you, were you on? Were you coming up to the, the gully? Of, up of the gully. So we were coming from the end of Tanner Farm, up the up, up Games the Hope, Bothy. up the Both, past the Bothy, and then past came the castle. past the castle, and then to the to the to the fence. Oh and, yes, and you can't carry on up. Um, so the, how do you access? So, the lock? so how do you access the lock that way? Yes, right. I, I, right. Okay. The, the, the nearest pedestrian gate at that point is at the where the fence uh, goes down to uh, the Games Hope Burn, and the next the next gate at, at the moment is not until you get onto Spears Gears, Spear Gears. Okay. And, and and that is one of the that is one of the sections that I've said to Borders Forest Trust is not satisfactory. I myself had exactly the same problem in the opposite direction because I was I, I took a walk along the whole of the fence when it had just been finished, and I made a number of comments um, uh, both about 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 the access uh, through it and also also the maintenance uh, that it's going to require and things that could be done to improve that. 
regarding the access, I said that, that one of the space places that needed to have a additional uh, pedestrian gate put in was halfway down uh, the hill between um, Spear, the, the, the junction at Spear Gares and um, the Games Hope Burn. Uh, uh, because until such time as that is, I'm, I, I, I'm actually very grateful for you flagging that up because I will now reinforce that point that, you know, having had some discussion with you, I've already met somebody who felt, you know, what, how the heck do I get through this blessed face? John, it's thing? a gorgeous walk. It's an amazing walk in the summer. And it yes. would be lovely to get up to Games Hope Block and not have the, have the fence in the way. Absolutely. So somehow to get um, by the fence in the right way would be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the, the thing that the, the the way the the way we we're, we're going to have to solve it is to put a gate in, and then to make it very clear um, uh, where the, the gate will be halfway located along that section of the fence, and a clear indication as to what the distance is to the next gate. Um, some signage actually on the fence. I've already indicated to Andy, and Andy's agreed that we need to put in put that in. So thank you for raising that. Yeah, and, and thank you, John, for your answer. Appreciate it. Well, I think what I would do is thank you very much for our very... Christine had a question, Dad. You've got Christine. a question? Oh, good. Oh. Who's got a question? Kate. Uh, Kate. Christine did. Hi. Hi, hi, John. It, it wasn't really a question. It, it was going to be a question, but you really answered it in the last one. I would just like to see some of the access gates mapped, you know, so that, because I'm a map reader, <laughs> and, and I would just like to know where I had to walk to to get through a pedestrian gate. So, yep. Yep. yeah, so you really answered it, and I just said, I just wanted to put, um, Gavin had a question, um, what height do you plant to? Sorry? What height do you plant trees to? You know, how do you decide when it's too wild and windy? Oh, right. Well, can, can I just first of all do with the, with, 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 with the mapping of the, of, of, the, of, of the pedestrian gates? Yes, that, that's one of the things that we are uh, uh, um, uh, aware of. And we need to, to um, uh, find a way of doing, frankly, robust a, a, a robust information uh, that we can put beside the information boards um, about where showing where the the uh, the gates through the 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 deer fence are um, it, you know uh, leaflet boxes are just no good in in in, in weather like we get in the games hope so we, we're going to have to do some um, uh, uh, fairly tough um, uh, um, uh, information which is um, uh, laminated and so on um, uh, um, and put it alongside the information boards. I think that's how we'll deal with that. In terms of uh, how do you how do you decide where it's too windy? Well, mainly actually from going out on the hill fairly frequently and knowing which bits are the most exposed. Um, obviously, those that are, 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 are facing due west uh, or southwest. Um, uh, uh, and, and around to the northwest um, uh, are, are likely to be very exposed, but it does depend a bit on on on, on the lie of the land, because um, we certainly know with with with, with the Games Hope that if you're going up the Games Hope, the slope on the left hand side is a lot more windy, a lot more exposed than the slope slope on the right hand side. So the the west facing slope, um, the, the the Games Hope can act like a tunnel. And that, that, that long sweeping curve up to um, uh, Dodds Kloof really catches the wind, um, whilst the area immediately above the Bothy is relative to that, um, a little bit more sheltered. Um, and so you get to know um, uh, the area. In terms of where uh, you plant high up, it's very much about location, location, location both in terms of engage, uh, in uh, exposure, um, in terms of, of, of um, also the soil conditions and the drainage um, uh, um, uh, as, as well, um, and the aspect. Although aspect's not so important. Aspect means whether it's facing the sun or facing or, 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 or constantly in the shade. Um, the, the montane woodland um, is <coughs> um, not so dependent 
uh, on um, uh, getting a, a lot of, of uh, um, uh, uh, sunshine. Not that there is much sunshine to be had <laughs> a lot of the time up there. Christine. Any other questions? I had um, a thousand yeah. volunteers and that you could have 60 of them on site. Is the cap on that to do with the number of trees to plant, the number of supervisors, um, getting vehicles in and out with volunteers on them? The, well, the, there are two or three constraints. You're quite right, actually. The number of trees is one of the things because you know volunteers who come a long distance, they're not they're not looking to plant huge numbers of trees, but nevertheless, you've got to have enough trees for every and, and also where you're, all the trees are planted with volgards and and, uh, and and a cane and and you, you've got to make sure that and you always make sure that you've got enough volgards and cranes for the for the for the trees but there may not be enough trees for more than 60 volunteers where you probably each, each volunteer gets maybe 20 to 30 trees to plant um, and the, the keen ones and the competent and the really uh, experienced ones get more that will, will take more or quite a lot more than that um, but the other thing is health and safety as well, um, that we need to have a sensible ratio of um, experienced people. Um, and that's where Andy Wilson is very, very good indeed, because um, uh, Andy is um, an experienced uh, uh, team leader um, on um, uh, overseas treks for young people, often on, often on his own in very remote, pretty remote locations. And his health and safety is, is, is second to none. Uh, and um, uh, uh, he, 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 he's uh, certainly uh, set 60 as, as the kind of upper limit. The, the one thing that you, you, you can't always allow for is the number of um, uh, the, the old, old timers like me, who are regular volunteers, turning up uh, unexpectedly because the weather's not too bad or we have to have a, a spare day. Um, uh, but actually it's quite helpful because we're then able to take uh, some of the um, less experienced volunteers um, uh, and, and, and help them uh, get on with the work. Thank you. Not at all. Welcome. So, John, this is Matthew again. Yes. Um, are you tracking the Golden Eagles? Sorry, are we? Are you tracking the Golden Eagles? Um, no, we're not. We're not tracking them. We have seen them, uh, and we have. Re we don't. We're not formally recording uh, them. Uh, although on a, on a voluntary basis, one of those people are making a note of them. We have seen um, uh, the golden eagles <coughs> on one very memorable occasion. I saw three, <laughs> three eagles. They had a, a couple of them had actually only fairly recently been released um, somewhere in the um, uh, in the Arrow, I think. Um, uh, over Nick is now uh, and um, uh, Tallar East side, um, but they have been regularly um, uh, seen uh, um, uh, over Tallar and Games Hope. Um, and yes, we would love to see them uh, 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 roost, uh, if not nest, uh, uh, on the uh, on the site. Um, but we'll just have to to to, to give time for that. Um, just apropos the Golden Eagles, one thing that will be a big help uh, for the Golden Eagles, and some of you may uh, be um, cheering it and others may actually be strongly disapproving of it, but the Scottish Government recently decided that mountain hare should become a protected species, uh, which means that um, the, 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 the shooting of mountain hare will be much more closely regulated um, because not in the borders, I have to say, but certainly in other parts of Scotland, they have been um, uh, 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 <coughs> fairly heavily uh, culled um, for um, uh, sporting estates, by sporting estates. Uh, and the, the result is that with that protection um, and given uh, the way in which we're managing the land, uh, we would hope to see a significant increase in the amount of mountain hare. Now, that will be of very real interests to the Golden Eagles. Um, I should say, by the way, in terms of wildlife, we've seen a, a, a very welcome increase in the amount of black grouse um, on, our, uh, 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 on, on not so much on Tower and Games Hope yet, but certainly at Carrefran. And I recently um, came across um, uh, um, uh, 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 earlier this year um, uh, in, in the spring um, a red grouse 
um, uh, female red grouse who deliberately was trying to distract me and there there um, at my feet almost was seven grouse chicks it was lovely and I got a picture of them um, so the the, um, the, the, the the moorland bird life is beginning to perk up as well we haven't seen uh, curlew or um, uh, lapwing yet though so I have one more question, and that is that the, there's a cairn opposite the, the Bothy the, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, Games Hope. Do you have any knowledge of what that is? Uh, no, we don't have any knowledge of it. And um, I have a number of people I've asked and nobody has come up with, a, with an answer. It's been quite carefully built, but there's absolutely no indication on it as to um, uh, uh, who put it there or why it was put there. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's obviously a story behind it, but I, I, if, if any of you uh, do find out, we, I would love to know. Um, one thing before you before you 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 wind up. By the way, I should have mentioned when we were talking about volunteers. If any of you would like to volunteer, we would very very much, uh, and I would very very much welcome that particularly, um, because um, as I say, I'm interested in actually getting some regular uh, volunteering days um, uh, at uh, T and G, uh, or a, or a small group of people uh, who could come on a regular basis. As Carifan has benefited from that hugely. Um, in the past with what they call the Tuesday Volunteers. Um, uh, so um, anybody interested, either contact Borders Forest Trust or through uh, Duncan, contact me directly. I'd be very happy to, to um, uh, come out with uh, you and uh, or any volunteer and um, uh, 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 describe the sorts of things that we get, we get involved in. It's not all um, battling with the elements, um, repairing fences. There's lots of other things to do as well. Well, uh, if there are no further questions, um, I would simply like to thank you very much for a fascinating and broad ranging discussion. I think the whole project is a very inspiring one. And if we can help participate in this in any small way, that would be excellent. But thank you for making a fine presentation. Um, and of course, I would commend this book that you has been produced this year. Uh, if you want to follow up the story in more detail, um, look at a journey in landscape restoration. But thank you very much um, for presenting this. It has been an absolute pleasure to, to, to talk to you and to, 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 and hopefully we can meet face to face at some oh, time yes. in the not too distant future. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.